What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Sanas here and my name is Shanks. In today on the epic map Fangon Forest, we are going to play Gondor against Isengard in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22 against Orlando Bloom. I mean, I gotta be honest, I don't know if this is Orlando Bloom or not, but it would be quite epic if this would be the real Orlando Bloom, the real Legolas, because, you know, playing against Legolas in Battle for Middle Earth 1 would be potentially the best thing ever in 2022 okay so gondor against isengard we're also gonna pick up the elvin wood from the spell book when you play gondor against isengard that's the go-to spell because besides giving us additional armor and making our units beefier and tankier it's also gonna nullify enemy leadership bonuses which they would get from the war chant that means we will be in a pretty good spot And Fangon Forest is a is a pretty big map, right? In this map, you have plenty of settlements, and that's gonna be good for the evil factions. They will grow incredibly rich, and our early game goal is to kill as many meals as we possibly can. Okay, so uh, what is the plan? We will be building every single settlement outside, and then saving up for the stable. With the stable, we will be recruiting Gondor Knights. That's the primary goal because the gondor knights are mobile we can use them for hitting and running dealing economical damage so we gotta use the elvin wood right off the bat oh it looks like he doesn't want to fight against us okay that means we can use the hobbit for defending and the soldiers for conquering i take it so as we are talking i have right now four settlements outside that's pretty good because every single farm is giving us additional food bonus and that's gonna make our gondor knights cost cheaper and that's very important because unlike the rohan faction gondor knights uh, are quite expensive also the gondor stable is more expensive gondor knights are more expensive in compared to the rohirrim and for that reason the more food bonus you can get the better it is going to be okay so we can actually turn and fight this no problemo uh, let's build one more farm inside to get a lot more food bonus. And then it's gonna be the time for us to shine with the steeple. Does he have actually war chants? Uh, oh, he wanna lure the troll, I see. Okay, we gotta bail. We gotta bail. I don't wanna lose my soldiers, actually. We can go now to the second settlement. And also attack this one at the same time. Oh, he was using war chant actually offens uh, offensively. This Isengard player want to actually take down our farms outside. That's not pretty good for us. Oh, our Hobbit is taking so much damage too, but let's focus down the mill. And now we got a bail. Oh, he was already able to destroy that. We can snipe it. Come on, come on, come on. Snipe. Boom on your face. And there we go. Minus 200 in the bank of Isengard. They are taking the Hobbits to Isengard. Or is the Hobbit taking you to the White City Gondor? That's the question, Orlando Bloom. Some bacon? Oh, no, 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 no. Our Hobbit wasn't able to get cloaked and rest in peace. I mean, we are cash floating, so I want to actually get Faramir now. I mean, you know, going for the stable will be a little bit too late. And let's start with Faramir and give him the chance to show his quality. Tell me again why I can't okay. Tell me again. I mean, it's not horrible, I guess. We were able to destroy one mill of them and take another mill from him too. That's pretty good. And after Faramir, we can now... I mean, let's use the Hobbit Peregrine Tuk to kill this mill. And Faramir we can use to kill those Uruks. And then creep. I mean, on the map Fangon Forest, there are plenty of creeps. Troll layer, Goblin layer. So Faramir should not have any trouble to get to level 5, which will unlock his leadership bonuses. I, Peramir, am ready to take my path. We ride out. Right now. Okay, so now the stable, we are a little bit away from getting to 800, and our hobbit is gonna kill those workers, let's build the stable. Cash floating is a bad thing, guys, you need to, when you wanna actually get better in an RTS game, you need to be efficient with your time, that's very important. You will lose this farm, but it's fine. And the stable for the Gondor Knights, and also, you know what I wanna do in this game? I wanna recruit Boromir, let's recruit the captains and the brothers of Gondor, side by side. Come on, Faramir. Okay, let's get dismounted. It's better. Uh, he's actually paying attention, but it's fine. We will be losing this farm, but it's also fine. Because now, in about a couple of seconds, we will be able to get the first Gondor Knight upon the field. And during all this time, we can use Faramir and creep the Troll Layer. Troll Layer is more rewarding. You will get more experience and also more money. So when you have to make a choice between creeping a Vork Layer, Goblin Layer or a Troll Layer, always go for the Troll Layer if you can. Do not 
I mean, not every unit or every hero can creep, but Rolea, Rolea and BFME1 are kind of busted. They are so tanky and also hitting like a truck. So only archer heroes or heroes like Boromir, who have the ability to knock, to knock down the target, can do that. I mean, he's sending more Uruks to us, but it's fine. We can now use the Gondor Knights to trample them down anyway, so we should be in a good spot. And we need to get a second one, 640, for one battalion. Okay, come on now, Gondor Knights, please. There we go. Nice. That should be enough to save the farm. And also, we need to build a well. When it comes to build a well, you want to build it before you need it. The well has a long build time. And when you need, when you build it, when you will need it, you will have to stand still in your base and wait like 30 seconds, 40 seconds, which actually is a quite a long time in an RTS game. So I want to build my uh, well after clicking on the second Gondor Knight. Now we gotta build up, build more and more blacksmiths inside the castle. Blacksmiths, unlike the farms, are not giving us food bonus, but they give us the steel bonus. And steel bonus means our upgrades will, will later on become cheaper. Come on. Save the Hobbit, save the Hobbit. Protect the Hobbit. We have also one power point collected. We can go for the heal, but let's not do that. Actually, we can save up for a, a ranger ally special summon. And if you are wondering why we, will be, why we will be saving up for the rangers, it's simple because at some point of the game, Isengard will not do anything else but recruit multiple pikemen. And with the rangers, we can snipe those pikemen and our Gundam Knights will have a bit more freedom. But until those pikes are arriving, we need to try our best to kill as many meals as we can. Creep this one as well, let's get the farm. Veg formation to increase the DPS. And keep killing those meals, left and right. And our Farami is almost level 5, that's dope, because Farami will give us fear resistant and also additional armor for the nearby allied units. I mean, we are definitely in a good spot. Uh, I don't see any pikemen yet. I mean, maybe he's going for Lourdes, because now I will be recruiting Boromir and use Boromir to creep this Trollia. And after creeping one Trollia only, our Boromir is gonna get level 4. And yeah. That means even more leadership. Remember, the only way Gondor faction can get uh, damage leadership is actually by getting Boromir to level 4. In Gondor's honor, our enemy has claimed these lands. Boom! There we go. Faramir showing his quality. That's what I like to see. Creep, 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 creep. Okay, we, I don't know if Lourdes is around, by the way. I don't want to risk the biscuit because Lourdes has the chance with level 1 to cripple our Faramir. And Faramir is not the tankiest hero in the game, so Faramir is going to die. One pikeman with Warchan is gonna be enough to kill Faramir. Talking about pikeman boys, here's pikeman up on the field. Our hobbit is clearing those uh, workers around the base, so they have, uh, the opponent player will not have any vision control. Now let's use the Gondor Knights to creep this layer. I mean, we are getting so... Oh, hold on a second. We are getting so much value actually, boys, uh, from creeping this mini stuff. And we, have really, we are really close to unlock the ranger special summon. Archer range, I want to recruit rangers and I want to put them inside the outpost. So, outpost control on a map like Fangorn Forest is essential for the victory. Not only we will be able to get a lot of vision control from capturing those outposts, but also they're gonna be a great uh, station which we can go back at and heal up. You know, we don't need to walk all the way back to the castle. We can just capture the outpost, build a well, and we can heal up way faster and use the time also much greater. Boromi is doing his thing. Okay, we need to recruit in total three Gonda archers to get the archer range to level two. And Faramir is level five. That's dope. And we are also, by the way, on the beta version of the patch 2.22, which has a couple of visual changes. So basically, our heroes like Aragorn, Gandalf, and Saruman, as well as Witch King, will have special arrival animations. When you recruit them from your fortress or citadel, they will actually have like a a uh, decent animation around the fortress. I believe, you know, improving the quality of life changes and also adding some visual effects to the game will make the gaming experience overall greater. Ranger summon to kill those pikemen. We can build a statue, a well, and I don't know, like a farm, blacksmith. I mean, we have so much map control. At some point of the game, we will be definitely building up the blacksmith, um, not the blacksmith, but the marketplace. And marketplace is very underrated. You want to build it when you have a lot of money. And 
the, you know, guys, one thing you need to understand about PFME games is the money you have in the bank is kind of meaningless if you cannot invest it wisely. So unless you want to save up for Gandalf early on, you don't need to have more than a thousand and two thousand in your bank. You can always keep spending the money to get even more money. And Blacksmith or Marketplace in this case, sorry, is going to be an incredible, efficient and important... Hold on a second, Lord. I'm going to use one around him. Uh, incredible and important in, you know, investment into the mid to lead game. He has Lords, but we can fight this. We have Rangers, Gondonites, and Boromir, Faramir. Hold then that's going to be a big fight here. Pangon Forest. Okay, Lords is using Carnage, but he shouldn't be able to reach to us. Boom. Chunk him. Nice. One hit, one hit, one hit. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, Gondonites, be careful, please. Okay, level, five, level 6 Faramir. We have also enough power points to go for the heal. Let's pick up the heal, you know, the heal for the worst case scenario. We might need to use Elven Woods here eventually, but I'm, you know, the thing is, our Gondor Knights have also a lot of leadership on the spot. They have the armor from Farami and the damage from Boromir. So we should be in a very good spot. And we don't even need to use Heal Man. That's pretty dope, guys. Not gonna lie. And Boromir with level 5 is gonna unlock his Captain of Gondor. I mean, not Captain of Gondor, the Horn of Gondor to stun the enemy units. Marketplace now. And we can capture the settlement and also buy the outpost offensively. That's going to create so much pressure on the opening player. Okay, that's awesome. That's really awesome. Now we can, you know, hit and run all the time. And it's going to be so annoying for the opening player to deal with that. We are definitely in a very good spot. And all we got to do is build a statue, a well, archery range. Now we don't need that. We can build a well. And, you know, more money never really hurts. We could also build a tower. I don't know. I don't think we need it. Because we will be putting ranges inside the outpost anyway. We should be in a perfectly fine spot. And look at that. We are destroying his meals too. We are in a very good spot. And Marketplace is going to grow us so incredibly rich. Okay. Heal up. Grand Harvest means 40% more money from the farms. It's awesome. And Marketplace is a building you need to keep up on the field in order to be able to keep the upgrades. So don't demolish that. You can demolish every other building. When you, for example, only are aiming to get Fire Arrow, you can get Fire Arrow and demolish your Archer range. You can still upgrade your units with Fire Arrow, even though your structure is not up on the field anymore. That's a huge differential between BFME 1 and BFME 2. And the reason is simple. In BFME 2, you have like unlimited you know spots you can build anywhere in bfme one since you have only a limited amount of spots available and you should be able to demolish buildings and replace buildings okay let's peel i don't want to risk the biscuits i mean we have so much crazy resource oh he has war riders oh okay i see you that's bad we will be now losing the top side though that's not very good boys we need to eventually uh, retreat with the Gondonites and also heroes to be able to reclaim this area. However, our Gondonites are no match against the pikemen. And we are not anywhere close yet to recruit Gandalf. So let's invest the money into the Iron Ore to get even more money from the blacksmith this time. And that's a long time investment. And Marketplace is not busted or OP by the way. Because it's only effective if the game lasts a while. Because you gotta keep in mind that you need to invest 1200 to build the Marketplace in the first place. 1500 for the Grand Harvest and 1200 for the Iron Ore. That's a... Investment, uh, you know, a quick math of 3,900, right, in total. And uh, in order to make this money back, you need to play at least like five more minutes. Okay, I mean, we have two power points collected. We have enough power points for Gandalf. He's going to use the Warchant. I'm going to use the Elven Wood to deny his, uh, him the leadership. Oh, okay. I mean, he has Tainted Land. I see you. I see you. You will be able to cover our land just like that. And we got a bill now. I mean, we need heavy armor too. I thought I bought it, but I didn't. So we need heavy armor, we need shields and uh, forge plates. Full upgrades. Upgrades are essential and extremely important in Battle for Middle of One. They add so much value to the unit. And one upgraded unit can actually fight against three unupgraded units. That's how important and impactful the upgrades are. Let's use the Ranger Summon to deal with the Pikemen. 
and i don't want to look the one thing i don't want to do now is to move to the top side and leave the bottom side unprotected i don't want to play you know dance around the rules if this makes sense for you guys when you want to conquer something you need to make sure to defend what you have up on the field you don't want to treat because one plus one minus one is still only one you know you don't want to do that so trading is not good it's always getting something additionally to what you got and for that reason let's you know we have now great protection in the outputs with rangers inside ranger inside the outputs ranger has like an incredible attack speed so the ranger is going to be able to kill units like pikeman for example in no time and he has worked at us up on the field that means we will definitely group need to group with rangers and also gunner knights with the heroes together I mean, we can kill this, no problemo. Oh, don't trample the pikeman, though. Be careful. Okay, we should be in a good spot. We have almost the power points for the, for the you know, Rohirrim summon too. But I'm assuming it would be a much greater choice of ours if we can save up for the eagle summon. Because as we are talking, I don't think the opponent player has anything to deal with the eagles. He has no fire yet. Oh, he's committing... Oh, okay. I mean, you will see now that this outpost is actually quite decently protected. He needs to use war chance and he needs to try to take down the statue first. The statue is giving us so much additional damage for the rangers inside. So he needs to try to take it down. Without, without that, our rangers are going to be able to kill them all. Okay, let's keep moving. Put him inside. Oh, look, the Varks are already dead. Now let's focus down the pikemen. You see that? Pew, 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 pew. They have no heavy armor too. They will die so fast. That's why you got to kill the statue first. We have also heal available. We can go for a small base rush. Boromir is fighting this. Should be able to win this. Statue. Once again, well. In a blacksmith. And our outpost should be still fine, I'm assuming, right? Because he doesn't want to kill the statue for, the, for, the, for whatever reason. I don't know why. Four power points in the bank. And our... Yeah, okay, he was able to destroy the citadel, but it's fine for me. I don't... I don't... Uh, you know, it's okay. Because we can replace it. And our rangers are gonna be in a in a good spot. Definitely in a good spot. We are two power points away, boys, from getting the eagle summon unlocked. Eagle summon is a huge power spike. And looks like we won't even need Gandalf anytime soon. When you you know, Gandalf is a big investment. Like six thousand. And on a small map, definitely worth it. On a map like Fangon Forest, you wanna fight actively for the map control first. Gandalf is not worth it if it would mean that you need to sacrifice a lot of uh, map control for him. You know what I'm saying? You want to... Uh, you know, map control is very important. It's not like one plus one. It's actually your opponent is losing so much more of that. You can kill those pikemen no problemo with the rangers. And keep recruiting more and more and more. We have Faramir leadership unlocked. Boromir leadership unlocked. We should be in a perfectly fine spot. I mean, we have full map control now as we are talking. We have four out of four outposts under our control. That's awesome. Now it's about protecting and making small but effective pushes. But look at this annoying guy. <laughs> He's like dancing around the Lamer Mill so I cannot target him. You know what I'm saying? Hey, stop it, dude. I'm going to just kill your Lamer Mill in this case. Okay, you know what? I'm going to just take down your Lamer Mill and then you have nothing to dance around anymore. This guy, though, <laughs> he was, you saw that, guys. He was actually dancing around the, around the lumber mill. All right, let's recruit uh, more rangers, give them upgrades. We can afford that. We have so much money. I mean, we can also, if we wanted to, to build up a, a siege works. But let's be honest, I don't think it's required at this point. We are actually in a good spot. And Isengard needs Saruman, Lourdes, and also lots of combos to face against us. And even though the money is not looking great as we are talking, but trust me on that one, guys, it's going to be changed very soon. Very, very soon, we will be able to get... Even Gandalf recruited in a few minutes. Oh, be careful against the pikemen. Okay. Put pressure on him. We are only one power open away from getting the eagle summon unlocked. Where is Lourdes at, actually? I don't know where Lourdes is. In the outpost, they are creating so much pressure because they are defending themselves quite nicely. With the archers inside the outpost, it's very effective. And for that reason, Isengard is going to struggle to refight for the map control. I think he was war chanting that. That's why. Oh, he has pikemen here too, but it's fine. Look, our money is rising to the sky, boys. We have so much money, dude. Holy quackamole. 
Okay, we can use rangers here, you know, just to... We don't need that for the base rush anyway. We can use the rangers for the map control fine to protect our settlements outside. It's gonna be also very important. And... Yeah, now we can go for a big push. Rangers, Faramir, Boromir, Gondonites, what else do you want? An Orphan, Wolfhall, and we will... Uh, dear Orlando Bloom, you will not bring the Hobbits to Isengard. I am bringing my army to Isengard instead. Okay. So, and guys, please let me know in the comment section down below, what is your most favorite faction in Battle for Middle of One? Do you like, do you like Isengard? If yes, I'm sorry, but Isengard is falling into pieces. And he's gonna call it GG now, Orlando Bloom. GG well played, my friend. The Eagles, the Eagles are coming and that's it, boys. Victory, clean victory from the Gondor faction against Isengard, Orlando Bloom. You better go acting. Don't play my game. I will see you next time. Until then, keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, guys.